In optics, the refractive index or index of refraction of a material is a dimensionless number that describes how light propagates through that medium. It is defined as n equals c d display style n equals frac c d where c is the speed of light in vacuum and v is the phase velocity of light in the medium for example the refractive index of water is 1.333 meaning that light travels 1.333 times faster in vacuum than in the water the refractive index determines how much the path of light is bent, or refracted, when entering a material. This is the first documented use of refractive indices and is described by Snell's law of refraction, n1 sin theta 1 equals n2 sin theta 2, where theta 1 and theta 2 are the angles of incidence and refraction, respectively, of a ray crossing the interface between two media with refractive indices n1 and n2. The refractive indices also determine the amount of light that is reflected when reaching the interface, as well as the critical angle for total internal reflection in Brewster's angle. The refractive index can be seen as the factor by which the speed and the wavelength of the radiation are reduced with respect to their vacuum values. The speed of light in a medium is V. C, N, and similarly the wavelength in that medium is λ. Lambda zero, n, where lambda zero is the wavelength of that light in vacuum. This implies that vacuum has a refractive index of 1, and that the frequency f d lambda of the wave is not affected by the refractive index. As a result, the energy e HF, of the photon, and therefore the perceived color of the refracted light to a human eye which depends on photon energy, is not affected by the refraction or the refractive index of the medium. While the refractive index affects wavelength, it depends on photon frequency, color and energy so the resulting difference in the bending angle causes white light to split into its constituent colors. This is called dispersion. It can be observed in prisms and rainbows, and chromatic aberration in lenses. Light propagation in absorbing materials can be described using a complex valued refractive index. The imaginary part then handles the attenuation, while the real part accounts for refraction. The concept of refractive index applies within the full electromagnetic spectrum, from X-rays to radio waves. It can also be applied to wave phenomena such as sound. In this case the speed of sound is used instead of that of light in a reference medium other than vacuum must be chosen. Definition The refractive index N of an optical medium is defined as the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum, C equals 299,792,458 meters per second, and the phase velocity V of light in the medium N equals C V Display style n equals frac c v. The phase velocity is the speed at which the crests or the phase of the wave moves, which may be different from the group velocity, the speed at which the pulse of light or the envelope of the wave moves. The definition above is sometimes referred to as the absolute refractive index or the absolute index of refraction to distinguish it from definitions where the speed of light in other reference media than vacuum is used. Historically air at a standardized pressure and temperature has been common as a reference medium. History Thomas Young was presumably the person who first used, and invented, the name, Index of Refraction, in 1807. At the same time he changed this value of refractive power into a single number, instead of the traditional ratio of two numbers. The ratio had the disadvantage of different appearances. Newton, who called it the proportion of the signs of incidence and refraction, wrote it as a ratio of two numbers, like 529 to 396, or nearly 4 to 3, for water. Hawksby, who called it the ratio of refraction, 
wrote it as a ratio with a fixed numerator, like 10,000 to 7,451.9 for urine. Hutton wrote it as a ratio with a fixed denominator, like 1.3358 to 1. Water. Young did not use a symbol for the index of refraction in 1807. In the next years, others started using different symbols n, m, and micro. The symbol n gradually prevailed. Typical values For visible light most transparent media have refractive indices between 1 and 2. A few examples are given in the adjacent table. These values are measured at the yellow doublet D line of sodium, with a wavelength of 589 nanometers, as is conventionally done. Gases at atmospheric pressure have refractive indices close to 1 because of their low density. Almost all solids and liquids have refractive indices above 1.3, with aerogel as the clear exception. Aerogel is a very low density solid that can be produced with refractive index in the range from 1.002 to 1.265. Moissanite lies at the other end of the range with a refractive index as high as 2.65. Most plastics have refractive indices in the range from 1.3 to 1.7, but some high refractive index polymers can have values as high as 1.76, for infrared light refractive indices can be considerably higher. Germanium is transparent in the wavelength region from 2 to 14 micrometers and has a refractive index of about 4. A type of new materials, called topological insulator, was recently found holding higher refractive index of up to 6 in near to mid infrared frequency range. Moreover, topological insulator material are transparent when they have nanoscale thickness. These excellent properties make them a type of significant materials for infrared optics. Refractive index below unity According to the theory of relativity, no information can travel faster than the speed of light in vacuum, but this does not mean that the refractive index cannot be lower than 1. The refractive index measures the phase velocity of light, which does not carry information. The phase velocity is the speed at which the crests of the wave move and can be faster than the speed of light in vacuum, and thereby give a refractive index below 1. This can occur close to resonance frequencies, for absorbing media, in plasmas, and for X-rays. In the X-ray regime the refractive indices are lower than but very close to one, exceptions close to some resonance frequencies. As an example, water has a refractive index of 0.9999974 equals 1 minus 2.6 times 10 minus 7 for X-ray radiation at a photon energy of 30 keV 0.04 nanometers wavelength. An example of a plasma with an index of refraction less than unity is Earth's ionosphere. Since the refractive index of the ionosphere a plasma, is less than unity, electromagnetic waves propagating through the plasma are bent away from the normal. See geometric optics, allowing the radio wave to be refracted back toward Earth, thus enabling long-distance radio communications. See also radio propagation and skywave. Negative refractive index Recent research has also demonstrated the existence of materials with a negative refractive index, which can occur if permittivity and permeability have simultaneous negative values. This can be achieved with periodically constructed metamaterials. The resulting negative refraction, i.e., a reversal of Snell's law, offers the possibility of the superlens and other exotic phenomena. Microscopic explanation at the atomic scale, an electromagnetic wave's phase velocity is slowed in a material because the electric field creates a disturbance in the charges of each atom, primarily the electrons, proportional to the electric susceptibility of the medium. Similarly, the magnetic field creates a disturbance proportional to the magnetic susceptibility. As the electromagnetic fields oscillate in the wave, the charges in the material will be shaken back and forth at the same frequency. The charges thus radiate their own electromagnetic wave that is at the same frequency, but usually with a phase delay, as the charges may move out of phase with the force driving them see sinusoidally driven harmonic oscillator. 
The light wave traveling in the medium is the macroscopic superposition sum of all such contributions in the material, the original wave plus the waves radiated by all the moving charges. This wave is typically a wave with the same frequency but shorter wavelength than the original, leading to a slowing of the wave. S phase velocity. Most of the radiation from oscillating material charges will modify the incoming wave, changing its velocity. However, some net energy will be radiated in other directions or even at other frequencies. See scattering. Depending on the relative phase of the original driving wave and the waves radiated by the charge motion, there are several possibilities. If the electrons emit a light wave which is 90 degrees out of phase with the light wave shaking them, it will cause the total light wave to travel slower. This is the normal refraction of transparent materials like glass or water, and corresponds to a refractive index which is real and greater than 1. If the electrons emit a light wave which is 270 degrees out of phase with the light wave shaking them, it will cause the wave to travel faster. This is called anomalous refraction and is observed close to absorption lines, typically in infrared spectra, with X-rays in ordinary materials, and with radio waves in Earth's ionosphere. It corresponds to a permittivity less than 1, which causes the refractive index to be also less than unity and the phase velocity of light greater than the speed of light in vacuum C. Note that the signal velocity is still less than C, as discussed above. If the response is sufficiently strong and out of phase, the result is a negative value of permittivity and imaginary index of refraction, as observed in metals or plasma. If the electrons emit a light wave which is 180 degrees out of phase with the light wave shaking them, it will destructively interfere with the original light to reduce the total light intensity. This is light absorption in opaque materials and corresponds to an imaginary refractive index. If the electrons emit a light wave which is in phase with the light wave shaking them, it will amplify the light wave. This is rare, but occurs in lasers due to stimulated emission. It corresponds to an imaginary index of refraction, with the opposite sign to that of absorption. For most materials at visible light frequencies, the phase is somewhere between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, corresponding to a combination of both refraction and absorption. Dispersion the refractive index of materials varies with the wavelength and frequency of light. This is called dispersion and causes prisms and rainbows to divide white light into its constituent spectral colors. As the refractive index varies with wavelength, so will the refraction angle as light goes from one material to another. Dispersion also causes the focal length of lenses to be wavelength dependent. This is a type of chromatic aberration, which often needs to be corrected for in imaging systems. In regions of the spectrum where the material does not absorb light, the refractive index tends to decrease with increasing wavelength, and thus increase with frequency. This is called normal dispersion, in contrast to anomalous dispersion, where the refractive index increases with wavelength. For visible light normal dispersion means that the refractive index is higher for blue light than for red. For optics in the visual range, the amount of dispersion of a lens material is often quantified by the Abbe number V equals N Y E L L O W minus 1 n b l u e minus n r e d Display style v equals frac n underscore mathrm yellow minus one n underscore mathrm blue n underscore mathrm red. For a more accurate description of the wavelength dependence of the refractive index, the Selmayr equation can be used. It is an empirical formula that works well in describing dispersion. 
Selmayr coefficients are often quoted instead of the refractive index in tables. Because of dispersion, it is usually important to specify the vacuum wavelength of light for which a refractive index is measured. Typically, measurements are done at various well-defined spectral emission lines, for example, ND usually denotes the refractive index at the Fraunhofer D line, the center of the yellow sodium double emission at 589.29 nm wavelength. Complex refractive index When light passes through a medium, some part of it will always be attenuated. This can be conveniently taken into account by defining a complex refractive index n underscore equals n plus i kappa display style underline n equals n plus i kappa here, the real part n is the refractive index and indicates the phase velocity, while the imaginary part kappa is called the extinction coefficient. Although kappa can also refer to the mass attenuation coefficient and indicates the amount of attenuation when the electromagnetic wave propagates through the material, that kappa corresponds to attenuation can be seen by inserting this refractive index into the expression for electric field of a plane electromagnetic wave traveling in the z direction. We can do this by relating the complex wave number k to the complex refractive index n through k equals 2 pi n, lambda 0, with lambda 0 being the vacuum wavelength. This can be inserted into the plane wave expression as E Z T equals re E 0 E I K underscore Z minus Omega T equals re E zero E I two Pi N plus I Kappa Z Lambda zero minus Omega T equals E minus two pi kappa z lambda zero re E zero E I K Z minus omega T display style math BF E Z T equals operator name re left math BF E underscore zero E carrot I underline K Z omega T right equals operator name re left math BF E underscore zero E carrot I two pi N plus I kappa Z lambda underscore zero omega T right equals E carrot minus two pi kappa Z Lambda underscore zero operator name re left math bf e underscore zero e caret i k z omega t right. Here we see that kappa gives an exponential decay, as expected from the Beer Lambert law. Since intensity is proportional to the square of the electric field, it will depend on the depth into the material as exp, minus 4 peak z, lambda zero, and the attenuation coefficient becomes alpha 4 peak, lambda zero. This also relates it to the penetration depth, the distance after which the intensity is reduced by 1, e, delta p 1, alpha equals lambda 0, 4 peak. Both n and kappa are dependent on the frequency. In most circumstances kappa greater than 0, light is absorbed, or kappa equals 0, light travels forever without loss. In special situations, especially in the gain medium of lasers, it is also possible that kappa an alternative convention uses nn minus i kappa instead of nn plus i kappa, but where kappa greater than zero still corresponds to loss. Therefore, these two conventions are inconsistent and should not be confused. 
The difference is related to defining sinusoidal time dependence as Re exp minus I omega t versus Re exp plus I omega t. See mathematical descriptions of opacity. Dielectric loss and non-zero DC conductivity in materials cause absorption. Good dielectric materials such as glass have extremely low DC conductivity, and at low frequencies the dielectric loss is also negligible, resulting in almost no absorption. However, at higher frequencies, such as visible light, dielectric loss may increase absorption significantly, reducing the material's transparency to these frequencies. The real, n, and imaginary, kappa, parts of the complex refractive index are related through the kramers kronig relations. In 1986 A.R. Foruhi and I. Bloomer deduced an equation describing kappa as a function of photon energy, E, applicable to amorphous materials. Foruhi and Bloomer then applied the kramers kronig relation to derive the corresponding equation for N as a function of E. The same formalism was applied to crystalline materials by Foruhi and Bloomer in 1988. The refractive index and extinction coefficient, N and kappa, cannot be measured directly. They must be determined indirectly from measurable quantities that depend on them, such as reflectance, R, or transmittance, T, or ellipsometric parameters, psi and delta. The determination of N and kappa from such measured quantities will involve developing a theoretical expression for R or T, or psi and delta in terms of a valid physical model for N and kappa. By fitting the theoretical model to the measured R or T, or psi and delta using regression analysis, N and kappa can be deduced. For X-ray and extreme ultraviolet radiation the complex refractive index deviates only slightly from unity and usually has a real part smaller than 1. It is therefore normally written as N. 1 minus delta plus I beta, or N. 1 minus delta minus I beta with the alternative convention mentioned above. Far above the atomic resonance frequency delta can be given by delta equals r zero lambda two n e two pi Display style delta equals frac r underscore zero lambda caret two n underscore e two pi, where r zero display style r underscore zero is the classical electron radius lambda display style lambda is the X-ray wavelength, and N E display style N underscore E is the electron density. One may assume the electron density is simply the number of electrons per atom Z multiplied by the atomic density, but more accurate calculation of the refractive index requires replacing Z with the complex atomic form factor F equals Z plus F plus I F display style F equals Z plus F plus I F it follows that Delta equals R zero lambda two two pi z plus f n a t o M display style delta equals frac r underscore zero lambda caret two two pi z plus f n underscore atom 
beta equals r zero lambda two two pi f n a t o m Display style beta equals frac r underscore zero lambda caret two two pi f single quote single quote n underscore atom with delta display style delta and beta display style beta typically of the order of 10-5 and 10-6. Relations to other quantities Optical path length Optical path length OPL, is the product of the geometric length d of the path light follows through a system, and the index of refraction of the medium through which it propagates OPL equals n d display style text opl equals nd this is an important concept in optics because it determines the phase of the light and governs interference and diffraction of light as it propagates according to fermat's principle light rays can be characterized as those curves that optimize the optical path length refraction when light moves from one medium to another, it changes direction, i.e. it is refracted. If it moves from a medium with refractive index n1 to 1 with refractive index n2, with an incidence angle to the surface normal of θ1, the refraction angle θ2 can be calculated from Snell's law n 1 sin θ 1 equals n 2 sin theta 2 display style n underscore 1 sin theta underscore 1 equals n underscore 2 sin theta underscore 2 when light enters a material with higher refractive index, the angle of refraction will be smaller than the angle of incidence and the light will be refracted towards the normal of the surface. The higher the refractive index, the closer to the normal direction the light will travel. When passing into a medium with lower refractive index, the light will instead be refracted away from the normal, towards the surface. Total internal reflection if there is no angle θ2 fulfilling Snell's law, i.e. n 1 n 2 sin θ 1 greater than 1 Display style frac n underscore one n underscore two sin theta underscore one greater than one. The light cannot be transmitted and will instead undergo total internal reflection. This occurs only when going to a less optically dense material, i.e., one with lower refractive index. To get total internal reflection, the angles of incidence theta one must be larger than the critical angle theta. C equals arc sine n two n one display style theta underscore mathem C equals arc sine left frac n underscore two n underscore one right reflectivity. Apart from the transmitted light there is also a reflected part. 
the reflection angle is equal to the incidence angle, and the amount of light that is reflected is determined by the reflectivity of the surface. The reflectivity can be calculated from the refractive index and the incidence angle with the Fresnel equations, which for normal incidence reduces to R 0 equals N 1 minus N 2 N 1 plus n 2 2 Display style R underscore zero equals left FRAC N underscore one N underscore two N underscore one plus N underscore two right carrot two for common glass and air N one 1 and n2 1 1.5 and thus about 4% of the incident power is reflected at other incidence angles the reflectivity will also depend on the polarization of the incoming light at a certain angle called brewster's angle p polarized light light with the electric field in the plane of incidence will be totally transmitted brewster's angle can be calculated from the two refractive indices of the interfaces Theta B equals arctan N two N one Display style theta underscore mathem B equals arctan left FRAC N underscore two N underscore one right Lenses The focal length of a lens is determined by its refractive index n and the radii of curvature r1 and r2 of its surfaces. The power of a thin lens in air is given by the lensmaker's formula 1 f equals n minus 1 1 r 1 minus 1 r 2 Display style FRAC one F equals N one left FRAC one R underscore one FRAC one R underscore two right where F is the focal length of the lens. Microscope resolution The resolution of a good optical microscope is mainly determined by the numerical aperture NA, of its objective lens. The numerical aperture in turn is determined by the refractive index N of the medium filling the space between the sample and the lens and the half-collection angle of light theta according to N A equals N sin theta display style mathem not equals N sin theta. For this reason, oil immersion is commonly used to obtain high resolution in microscopy. In this technique, the objective is dipped into a drop of high refractive index immersion oil on the sample under study. Relative permittivity and permeability The refractive index of electromagnetic radiation equals N equals Epsilon R mu R Display style n equals sqrt bar epsilon underscore mathrm r mu underscore mathrm r, where epsilon r is the material s relative permittivity and mu r is its relative permeability. The refractive index is used for optics in Fresnel equations and Snell. 
S law, while the relative permittivity and permeability are used in Maxwell's equations and electronics. Most naturally occurring materials are non-magnetic at optical frequencies, that is mu r is very close to 1, therefore n is approximately square root epsilon r. In this particular case, the complex relative permittivity epsilon r, with real and imaginary parts epsilon r and r, and the complex refractive index n, with real and imaginary parts n and kappa, the latter called the extinction coefficient, follow the relation epsilon underscore r equals epsilon r plus i epsilon tilde r equals n underscore 2 equals n plus i kappa 2 Display style underline bar epsilon underscore mathem r equals bar epsilon underscore mathem r plus i tilde bar epsilon underscore mathem r equals underline n caret two equals n plus i kappa caret two, and their components are related by epsilon r equals n. 2 minus kappa 2 display style bar epsilon underscore mathrm r equals n caret 2 kappa caret 2 epsilon tilde r equals 2 n kappa display style tilde bar epsilon underscore mathrm r equals 2 n kappa and n equals epsilon underscore r plus epsilon R two display style n equals sqrt frac underline bar epsilon underscore mathrm r plus bar epsilon underscore mathrm r two kappa equals epsilon underscore r minus Epsilon R two Display style kappa equals SQRT FRAC underline bar epsilon underscore mathem R bar epsilon underscore mathem R two where Epsilon underscore R equals Epsilon R two plus Epsilon tilde R two Display style underline bar epsilon underscore mathem r equals sqrt bar epsilon underscore mathem r caret two plus tilde bar epsilon underscore mathem r caret two is the complex modulus density. In general, the refractive index of a glass increases with its density. However, there does not exist an overall linear relation between the refractive index and the density for all silicate and borosilicate glasses. 
A relatively high refractive index and low density can be obtained with glasses containing light metal oxides such as lithium oxide and MgO, while the opposite trend is observed with glasses containing PbO and BaO as seen in the diagram at the right. Many oils, such as olive oil, and ethyl alcohol are examples of liquids which are more refractive, but less dense, than water, contrary to the general correlation between density and refractive index. For gases, N-1 is proportional to the density of the gas as long as the chemical composition does not change. This means that it is also proportional to the pressure and inversely proportional to the temperature for ideal gases. Group index Sometimes, a group velocity refractive index, usually called the group index is defined N G equals C B G Display style n underscore mathem g equals frac mathem c b underscore mathem g, where b g is the group velocity. This value should not be confused with n, which is always defined with respect to the phase velocity. When the dispersion is small, the group velocity can be linked to the phase velocity by the relation b g equals v minus lambda d v d lambda Display style v underscore mathem g equals v lambda frac mathem d v mathem d lambda where lambda is the wavelength in the medium. In this case the group index can thus be written in terms of the wavelength dependence of the refractive index as n g equals n 1 plus lambda n d n d lambda display style n underscore mathem g equals frac n 1 plus frac lambda n frac mathem d n mathem d lambda when the refractive index of a medium is known as a function of the vacuum wavelength instead of the wavelength in the medium, the corresponding expressions for the group velocity and index are for all values of dispersion V G equals C N minus lambda Zero D N D Lambda Zero Minus One Display style V underscore Mathem G equals Mathem C left N Lambda underscore zero FRAC Mathem D N Mathem D Lambda underscore zero right carrot minus one N G equals N minus Lambda zero D N D Lambda Zero Display style N underscore Mathem G equals N Lambda underscore zero FRAC Mathem D N Mathem D Lambda underscore zero Where Lambda zero is the wavelength in vacuum Momentum Abraham Minkowski controversy 
In 1908, Hermann Minkowski calculated the momentum P of a refracted ray as follows P equals N E C Display style P equals FRAC, nay, mathem, C where E is energy of the photon, C is the speed of light in vacuum and N is the refractive index of the medium. In 1909, Max Abraham proposed the following formula for this calculation P equals E N C Display style P equals FRAC E N mathem C a 2010 study suggested that both equations are correct, with the Abraham version being the kinetic momentum and the Minkowski version being the canonical momentum, and claims to explain the contradicting experimental results using this interpretation. Other relations as shown in the Fizeau experiment, when light is transmitted through a moving medium, its speed relative to an observer traveling with speed v in the same direction as the light is v equals c n plus v 1 minus 1 n 2 1 plus v c n approximately equals c n plus v 1 minus 1 n 2 Display style V equals FRAC Mathem C N plus FRAC V left one FRAC one N carrot two right one plus FRAC V C N approximately FRAC Mathem C N plus V left one FRAC one N carrot two right. The refractive index of a substance can be related to its polarizability with the Lorentz Lorentz equation or to the molar refractivities of its constituents by the Gladstone Dale relation. Refractivity In atmospheric applications, the refractivity is taken as N. N1. Atmospheric refractivity is often expressed as either N. 106 n1 or n equals 108 n1 the multiplication factors are used because the refractive index for air n deviates from unity by at most a few parts per 10000 molar refractivity on the other hand is a measure of the total polarizability of a mole of a substance and can be calculated from the refractive index as a equals m Rho N two minus one N two plus two Display style A equals FRAC M Rho FRAC N carrot two minus one N carrot two plus two where rho is the density, and m is the molar mass. Nonscalar, nonlinear, or non-homogeneous refraction So far, we have assumed that refraction is given by linear equations involving a spatially constant, scalar refractive index. These assumptions can break down in different ways, to be described in the following subsections. Birefringence 
In some materials the refractive index depends on the polarization and propagation direction of the light. This is called birefringence or optical anisotropy. In the simplest form, uniaxial birefringence, there is only one special direction in the material. This axis is known as the optical axis of the material. Light with linear polarization perpendicular to this axis will experience an ordinary refractive index NO while light polarized in parallel will experience an extraordinary refractive index NE. The birefringence of the material is the difference between these indices of refraction, delta N equals NE minus NO light propagating in the direction of the optical axis will not be affected by the birefringence since the refractive index will be NO independent of polarization. For other propagation directions the light will split into two linearly polarized beams. For light traveling perpendicularly to the optical axis the beams will have the same direction. This can be used to change the polarization direction of linearly polarized light or to convert between linear, circular and elliptical polarizations with waveplates. Many crystals are naturally birefringent, but isotropic materials such as plastics and glass can also often be made birefringent by introducing a preferred direction through, e.g., an external force or electric field. This effect is called photoelasticity, and can be used to reveal stresses in structures. The birefringent material is placed between crossed polarizers. A change in birefringence alters the polarization and thereby the fraction of light that is transmitted through the second polarizer. In the more general case of trirefringent materials described by the field of crystal optics, the dielectric constant is a rank 2 tensor, a 3 by 3 matrix. In this case the propagation of light cannot simply be described by refractive indices except for polarizations along principal axes. Nonlinearity The strong electric field of high-intensity light, such as output of a laser, may cause a medium's refractive index to vary as the light passes through it, giving rise to nonlinear optics. If the index varies quadratically with the field, linearly with the intensity, it is called the optical Kerr effect and causes phenomena such as self-focusing and self-phase modulation. If the index varies linearly with the field, a non-trivial linear coefficient is only possible in materials that do not possess inversion symmetry, it is known as the Pockels effect. Inhomogeneity if the refractive index of a medium is not constant, but varies gradually with position, the material is known as a gradient index or Grin medium and is described by gradient index optics. Light traveling through such a medium can be bent or focused, and this effect can be exploited to produce lenses, some optical fibers and other devices. Introducing Grin elements in the design of an optical system can greatly simplify the system, reducing the number of elements by as much as a third while maintaining overall performance. The crystalline lens of the human eye is an example of a Grin lens with a refractive index varying from about 1.406 in the inner core to approximately 1.386 at the less dense cortex. Some common mirages are caused by a spatially varying refractive index of air. Refractive index measurement Homogeneous media the refractive index of liquids or solids can be measured with refractometers. They typically measure some angle of refraction or the critical angle for total internal reflection. The first laboratory refractometers sold commercially were developed by Ernst Abbey in the late 19th century. The same principles are still used today. In this instrument a thin layer of the liquid to be measured is placed between two prisms. Light is shown through the liquid at incidence angles all the way up to 90 degrees, i.e., light rays parallel to the surface. The second prism should have an index of refraction higher than that of the liquid, so that light only enters the prism at angles smaller than the critical angle for total reflection. This angle can then be measured either by looking through a telescope, or with a digital photodetector placed in the focal plane of a lens. The refractive index N of the liquid can then be calculated from the maximum transmission angle theta as N equals ing sin theta, where ing is the refractive index of the prism. This type of devices are commonly used in chemical laboratories for identification of substances and for quality control. 
Handheld variants are used in agriculture by e.g., winemakers to determine sugar content in grape juice, and inline process refractometers are used in, e.g., chemical and pharmaceutical industry for process control. In gemology a different type of refractometer is used to measure index of refraction and birefringence of gemstones. The gem is placed on a high refractive index prism and illuminated from below. A high refractive index contact liquid is used to achieve optical contact between the gem and the prism. At small incidence angles most of the light will be transmitted into the gem, but at high angles total internal reflection will occur in the prism. The critical angle is normally measured by looking through a telescope. Refractive index variations Unstained biological structures appear mostly transparent under bright field microscopy as most cellular structures do not attenuate appreciable quantities of light. Nevertheless, the variation in the materials that constitutes these structures also corresponds to a variation in the refractive index. The following techniques convert such variation into measurable amplitude differences. To measure the spatial variation of refractive index in a sample phase contrast imaging methods are used. These methods measure the variations in phase of the light wave exiting the sample. The phase is proportional to the optical path length the light ray has traversed, and thus gives a measure of the integral of the refractive index along the ray path. The phase cannot be measured directly at optical or higher frequencies, and therefore needs to be converted into intensity by interference with a reference beam. In the visual spectrum this is done using Zernike phase contrast microscopy, differential interference contrast microscopy, DIC, or interferometry. Zernike phase contrast microscopy introduces a phase shift to the low spatial frequency components of the image with a phase shifting annulus in the Fourier plane of the sample, so that high spatial frequency parts of the image can interfere with the low frequency reference beam. In DIC, the illumination is split up into two beams that are given different polarizations, are phase shifted differently, and are shifted transversely with slightly different amounts. After the specimen, the two parts are made to interfere, giving an image of the derivative of the optical path length in the direction of the difference in transverse shift. In interferometry the illumination is split up into two beams by a partially reflective mirror. One of the beams is let through the sample before they are combined to interfere and give a direct image of the phase shifts. If the optical path length variations are more than a wavelength the image will contain fringes. There exist several phase contrast X-ray imaging techniques to determine 2D or 3D spatial distribution of refractive index of samples in the X-ray regime. Applications the refractive index is a very important property of the components of any optical instrument that uses refraction. It determines the focusing power of lenses, the dispersive power of prisms, and generally the path of light through the system. It is the increase in refractive index in the core that guides the light in an optical fiber, and the variations in refractive index that reduces the reflectivity of a surface treated with an anti-reflective coating. Variant refractive index can generate resonant cavity that can enhance phase shift of output light. This is important for design and fabricate a variety of optoelectric devices such as hologram and lens. Since refractive index is a fundamental physical property of a substance, it is often used to identify a particular substance, confirm its purity, or measure its concentration. Refractive index is used to measure solids, liquids, and gases. Most commonly it is used to measure the concentration of a solute in an aqueous solution. It can also be used as a useful tool to differentiate between different types of gemstone, due to the unique chatoyance each individual stone displays. A refractometer is the instrument used to measure refractive index. For a solution of sugar, the refractive index can be used to determine the sugar content. See bricks. See also. References External links NIST calculator for determining the refractive index of air Dielectric materials Science World Filmetrics online database free database of refractive index and absorption coefficient information 
Refractive Index, Inforefractive Index Database featuring online plotting and parameterization of data. Sapra Sa. Com Refractive Index Database as text files, sign up required. LUXPOP Thin Film and Bulk Index of Refraction and Photonics Calculations.